So chords, again, another hexel. And what I'll actually do here, just to go back to our ARP pluck. And again, if you are an Ableton user, one of the things I've found really, really, really useful is the fact that I actually have multiple plugin windows open. Again, just a very slight Ableton power tip where if you go to the plugins window, make sure that multiple plugin windows are set to on because what I can do now is I can go back to this, go to user presets, add this back in. And what you'll notice is that the two instances of Hexel here, the pluck that we worked on earlier and the chords now have very similar notes. But what you'll notice on the right hand side here is that we have a cell with C minor, C sharp major, and an F sus4, which stands for sustain4. Now, what's great about this is being able to compare and contrast and essentially make sure that the sequence that you are creating in the newer instance of Hexel can work and harmonize with the one that you have already going on a more melodic side. In music composition, we have two main techniques of composing new musical ideas. We have melodic, which is what we've just done with the ARP pluck here, and there's also harmonic, which is to do with chord progressions and everything else. So, you know, it's quite a nice thing to kind of look at. So again, what you'll see here is that there's a lot of shared notes between the two here, and that's been very much by design. And I've created this from scratch. Again, very, very basic. I've got the auto MIDI on, so it starts by playing an F minor. And then obviously as it moves through the steps, it will play a C minor, a C sharp major, and an F sus4. And again, don't be worried if you don't understand what these things tend to mean. You know, uh, it, it's a very, very simple thing where there's just slightly different colors of notes. And again, this is the other thing I'd really highly recommend Hexel for is the ability for you to actually learn some music theory alongside your compositions. So you'll start to see with this different interaction rather than just looking at plain notes on a piano roll, whatever your DAW is, whether it's Ableton, Logic, FL, whatever it is you're using, you're starting to see the associations between notes, chords, scales, things like that as well. Really, really powerful stuff. So from here, if I were to play the pad section, which is again a basic preset within Artoria Pigments. And there you go. And you'll notice the movements of Hexel in terms of its triggers is very, very different. Now, if we compare the two here, what we've got is speed is one bar. So that means we only trigger a group of cells once every four beats, once every bar. So we get that lovely, almost like four bar chord progression, starting with an F minor. Again, it can start in the F minor because we've got the auto MIDI on. So the emitter will actually create the chord. But how do we set this to the chord mode? It's actually quite simple. Let's say, for example, I just take out of the C here, and that means now that note will no longer play. If I want to then trigger that note again, or maybe any other note in our grid here, I can click on the C. And then what I'm going to do is, is either control click or right click on the actual cell itself. And you can see we've got various different chord options. So we've got things like major, minor, major with a seventh, minor with a seventh, with a sixth added on, with a major nine, again, minor nine, dominant seventh, and then more sort of interesting stuff like the sustain four or the sus four, like we're using on this F over here, and augmented and diminished chords. So again, don't worry too much if you don't understand what these things mean. You can actually play around with them and hear what they sound like. Really, what music theory is, is just a shorthand for understanding how different notes sound together and how they play together. That's all it is, really. It's like code, essentially. It's like MIDI. It's just that you work in MIDI rather than, you know, like 
say for example, you know, Mozart or John Williams used to on pizza, you know, pieces of like notation and sheet paper, basically sheet music paper. So ultimately, play around with it, see what kind of vibe works well for melodic techno as you can see it's the vast majority of the time it's minor it's minor keys so we'll actually right click put that in a minor and then go from there so again what we'll be able to do now is just listen to the two sequences hear them play together and then be able to appreciate how i've programmed them to actually work together so one underpins the other Again, the harmonics of the pads are underpinning the more melodic arpeggio-based pluck, which is kind of cycling through its variations, but is being made more emotional by the pads that are running that four solid chord kind of, you know, progression underneath. So again, very, very simple to be able to set this up. You just right click on the cell and and create a chord of your choice and what's quite interesting here is i played around for quite some time with this combination of the c sharp major and the f sus4 because what i really wanted is that feeling of it's going up but it feels like it wants to go back to that root note it wants to go home that's a great you know signifier of a good chord progression and these are things that as you learn a little bit more about music theory, again, Hexel's a great place to start. You can actually start to appreciate how these great chord progressions and great melodic sequences are actually written by the incredibly talented artists that we have in electronic music these days and also across other genres as well. So again, we can take advantage now of the MIDI drag where we can drag straight into pigments and we can actually see in the more traditional MIDI view what this translates into. So again, very nice solid chords, works really nicely. And again, you can start to pick apart what these chords actually are. You know, you can see the F minor, again, F with a G sharp and a C4. So again, this is what I mean about actually really starting to get under the hood of music theory if you've found it a little bit intimidating in the past. You can start to program in different chords, drag them into the piano roll here in Ableton or whatever your DAW is, and actually investigate what they actually look like in the more traditional piano role and you can start to add that to your musical vocabulary you start to recognize understand both visually and audibly what these chords are meant to look like you know written down in the piano role and also what they're supposed to sound like as well and you'd be amazed how quickly you start to build up a recognition you know people talk about having perfect pitch and stuff like that but really what it is is just practice most people don't have that i certainly don't i suck at playing the piano and playing that guitar on the wall quite frankly that thing stays on the wall more than it's played but ultimately i do have a, a good understanding of music theory when it comes to composition and that will stand you in good stead i would go as far as to say okay yes in electronic music Music theory is probably not an absolute essential. However, it's really, really important to have some music theory knowledge. And in fact, a little music theory knowledge goes a hell of a long way.